Okay then, my guys, we are here with another Fortnite Save the World blog post. Now, this is what I would call the delayed blog post because I think it should have been out last Thursday, which is the 11th. However, I suppose better late than never in some ways that we have the post up. And let's just quickly go through it. And there's a couple of things that actually are a little interesting. So, first off, by the Fortnite team, so our guy who works on Fortnite at the world starting off uh, so in five days from now we have Dashing Hawk and the Love Song Bow so if we just scroll down here that is Dashing Hawk right there and he is primarily he's a soldier because his perk is lefty and righty and he can stun upon this which is it's okay it's not a brilliant it's not like a particularly massively cool perk but it's okay it's, it's not the worst one we've had recently and it's not the best one we're going to have um the actual item the actual model itself is pretty cool like that and uh, he's coming to the event store so that's a gold one so that'll be another 2800 gold pieces uh, character and that's on sunday i think that is uh five days from now at the same time as it says back at the top here we've got the love song bow so the love song bow you don't know there it is there and it stuns enemies if you do max charge shots. I've got one already. Um, it's kind of cool. It, it's it's one of these ones which is cool in theory, but not really in practice because actually getting the charge shots a bit painful, especially if you've got a massive swarm and one bow shot or one arrow, I should say, per, per time. It's a little slow, so you can stun them, which is kind of cool, but it doesn't affect bosses. Um, and it doesn't affect enemies that have already been hit with the same effect, so you can't just keep spamming it on bosses to keep them stunned, which is a bit annoying. But it is a cool design, it is a cool weapon, it does work in some circumstances, and it works, I suppose, nicely with with Dashing Hawk, because of course his perk, if you're using this too, you can stun enemies 37% um, of the time if you your lead, as well as doing... 100% more damage with righty, uh, lefty and righty when hitting stunned enemies. So that'll be, uh, if I'm rightly, that's the same kind of cost, like another 2,800 gold pieces, I think. But that one, don't quote me on that one for the, for the weapons. I forget the weapon cost. So at the same time, we have War Games Invasion. So now we've got a banner associated with an alien version of um, the War Games. So if you've been playing that through the past, um, it's been months now almost. We've been getting different banners, and here's yet another one. They're kind of fun games to play, so worth checking them out at least once or twice for each of the different types. Uh, at the same time, and this is something I've seen mentioned in, um, by a few other players actually online, which is that if you have extraterrestrial Rio, then her perk has actually been upgraded a little bit. So her perk normally was to do with energy damage and. I forget actually it was I reckon we forgot what the original the original perk is. But you now have um a decent amount of damage when shields are at least fifty percent full. So if you're using the right energy weapon you can spam out quite high damage if you keep your shields pretty full. Of course for someone such as myself who uses the blast from the past perk, this is kinda kinda useless because um never use shields. However, if you have characters who use shields a lot then this is kind of a fun a fun thing and you can do I I've seen a few people's videos where they do huge amounts of damage. Um I think over a million a million uh hit point damage shots using the right weapons because of the way some of the damage scales with some of the energy weapons. Now this video is a little weird because it's kind of a little bit in character so to speak, uh, as if you're playing the game here because you've got some reports from from first you have Major Oswald who is a character here on on um on the right. With the hook for his hand, you can't see where the hook is, but you've got a hook, I'm pretty sure, on the hand. And you've got Clip. And then you've got uh, the director, the director Briggs. Um, now, one thing I noticed already when I looked at this very briefly is I'm pretty sure his right hand has got a hook on it in this picture here. This one, it looks like it's his left hand. <laughs> now, maybe it's just because he's got two hands and he wears this over the top of the hand. I need to check some more models, actually, of the character, because I do not remember, to be honest. <laughs> but I noticed this when I was just looking through this before to read this video. I was like, wait a minute. This picture here, you can see the hand there is the, the same kind of hand here. And 
You can't see his other hand at all because behind her back. So suspicious. However, just very quickly, if you look at these, these actually these are actually in character small amounts of details that uh, will actually actually affect the gameplay. So the first one from Major Oswald says talking about um, uh, husks to heal, and as it says here, the storm has done a number of those pesky nurses. They have no longer stacked their healing power on husks. Not sure what the storm genius thought. That was a good idea in the first place, but it seems to come to the sense that they heal husk at the same rate regardless of how many nurses. That's good. So basically, if you have three of the healing characters around, they're only going to heal at the same rate as if there's one around. So you didn't see. So one problem that has been in, I would say, especially in ventures, I found this, but in some of the higher levels up of Candy Rally onwards, is that you can get some real annoying stacking effects of the healing and. Really is screwy when you get uh, several nurses in one bit and these husks are healing up at like 100 or 150 percent of the healing that they're supposed to be. Anyway, it goes on to say in the high levels of Twin Peaks, the husks seem to be dealing less damage to our structures with their attacks, bombs, projectiles, and everything else they throw to base. So basically, they have cut back the damage husks are doing to buildings in Twin Peaks. Okay. And specifically, in, I don't know which level it is exactly, but specifically in that, the top end of that. And finally, reports are showing our crowd control effects are not quite as potent. Looks like we'll be able to get them controlled for the first five effects before they go immune to our tactical shenanigans. So what it's saying here is that you can't spam certain status effects repeatedly. Um, for example, if I'm using my ear splitter spear, you can't just keep that running constantly if you're not killing the enemies after the first five times you've actually done all the effects of them. So you need to increase your damage and kill them faster, is what he's basically saying for that change there. Right, your clip. Clip says, I made some breakthroughs with craft crafting. Higher tier traps no longer require increased resources when crafting. This means legendaries will now cost the same as commons. Excellent. This change will provide us with some high level materials while exploring time peaks, especially at the high levels. Those sweet five star materials will now be found more often while four star will drop less. This means more crystals and quartz all around. So basically, cut the costs of the lower traps and increase the drop rate of the higher bits that would make the traps. Brilliant. Finally, I've done some scavenging on my own and picked up the low rarity weapons and traps in the end of time peaks. Who needs them? So, basically, what she's saying is that. And it goes on to explain it more carefully here is that they phased out the drop rate of the common um, and uncommon and even rare, but I didn't get to mid twine um, weapons to drop in these bits. So you only start getting epics and legendaries only of weapons and traps, which you find in chests and in other things that you search. Or, for example, if you take out um, a uh, encampment. So that's great. These, these changes are all great too. And here, the director's update. One of the side effects of being a business wolf is wolf-like efficiency. Oh, there you go. I had some changes in research and I've now discovered entry. You can now go up to 999 rather than 200. And perhaps this is the best thing of all the bits they just wrote before. Because basically, so, these ones are good. These first two are good. They make winning a bit easier with the healing. This one here is fine if you're in Twine Peaks, which is the damage. It's great. This one here is a little bit annoying because we can't do spam stuff. This here is great for getting more resources. This is great. Oh, this is great for getting more the top end resources. It's great too. And this is great because, to be honest, I felt like that should be phased out even earlier than Candy Valley. If I'm being completely honest, I think even blank than some of that should be phased out. However, better early Candy than never. This this might save my life because, for example, in my inventory, if you were to look, you would see that I have twelve thousand nuts and bolts. The problem is 12,000 nuts and bolts, 200 a stack, takes up 30 slots. If I have 999 by one, it now takes up 12 slots. So this is unbelievably good. Straight from the off. Actually, it doesn't take up 30 slots. It takes up more than it takes 60 slots. Up. Anyway, it takes up a lot of slots. So these changes are all really good. I think it's only for the remainder of the season adventures, I think. But I will, I might say at the bottom, perhaps. Um, exactly the details. If it's permanent, brilliant. Now, a new questline, and this is, as I was just showing you before, this is for 
Major Oswald. He is a soldier because he uses war cry, for sure. Uh, he comes out, this, his quest comes out on the 27th, which is, what is that, nine, uh, 11 days from now. And he... <sighs> You see, he is more Christ snares enemies within a certain range for 30% of his duration. Additionally, affected enemies take 25% of damage. Now, I kind of go and look at that and say, that's nice, but that's not great. It's, it's a nice thing to have, it just doesn't, it's not a game breaking or a brilliant thing to have. So, cool character model, good to have more characters in the game. Nice perk, it'd be fun to use. Probably not game breaking, not gonna be useful end game, probably. Maybe useful in dungeons, that bit there actually, the more I think about it. But worthwhile nonetheless. Now the, and this one this one's a bit of a funny one because Val is a defender who first came out, I think she was in twenty eighteen, I wanna say, because twenty twenty one, no. Twenty eighteen I think she came out, and I think that's the only time you could have collected her until now. So as part of finishing his quest line to get in, you get her too. Uh, which is great because um, defenders aren't that useful, but you know, uh, especially for your collection book, if you're all into getting every single one of everything, this is a character you couldn't get before now. Um, so there you go, first time in three years, I think you can pick her up. Um, and then from the store at the same time on the 27th, you've got uh, Fallen Love Ranger Jonesy, so the opposite to the uh, the Love Ranger Jonesy it's in the uh, store domain, I believe. And his so this character is actually kind of cool because he gets energy every time he kills something, and every time he kills more things, the three seconds refreshes back to three seconds again. So if it goes on to one second, he kills something back to three, and you keep getting this constantly restoring energy. This could be really cool depending on which characters you have if you want to try to build some kind of recurring energy build. So you can, you can use someone like him. If you don't want to use someone like Anti Snuggle Sarah, so um, Anti Snuggle Sarah has a very similar book in which he gets energy based on eliminations using a melee weapon. If you want to use a gun though and do something similar, Fuel for the Fallen is probably the better choice. Um, you can of course stack the two together, which would be great because then you're doing if you're doing melee eliminations, you have both, then you're getting both sets of energy back all the time, which is a great way to start st stacking energy back up. Um, and the character model is also pretty cool as well, actually, if I'm being honest. And then the last thing they say, because this is just a pack again, as always, is that there will be a new, a new, um, more games on the 27th, and this time it will be some kind of bomb that's going to explode, um, that you have to keep moving to, and I presume trying to, uh, diffuse. I do not know, because I've not done that one before. But it looks like the bomb is constantly zipping around the place using um, wormholes. So, it should be fun. It should be interesting. Uh, it should be cool. So, as it says here, there you go. We've got the, the Fortnite pack to get to save the world, as always. With the machine is meaner and the regen version of the trap. And the V-Bucks and the X-ray tokens. And the back bling. And otherwise, well, they do not mention the date on these changes. So I'm going to assume these might be permanent just because the one, one thing that makes me think this is permanent well, well there are two things one is that they mentioned canny valley and twine a lot rather than adventure specifically so it seems like it's tied to the storyline rather than the adventure mode and of course this bit here because of course inventories um and storage and so on is a more of a main game thing than the ventures but i would say this is more like the blog post we were hoping for a week and a half ago when we got kind of a filler wait until next time blog post so congrats to epic for actually bringing out some kind of cool stuff so feel free to leave a comment down below uh, whether you and you like the sound of some of these changes especially the changes to the main game um detailed here um hopefully this is helpful and i will try and do a video in a day or two's time which is about either Stoneheart Far or anti Snuggle Sarah because I have both those characters and I'm not sure which one to do a video first. So if anyone has any preferences feel free to shoot me a message below and I will see what I can do. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.